So we're just down here at the other sheds and as you can hear, as soon as they hear me coming, they start to roar. But they're happy enough, they're full. A lot of them laying down up there as well, as you can see. But it is Monday, bank holiday, the 18th of April. You wouldn't think it to see cattle all inside. Yes, it was Easter Sunday. Myself and the family decided we'd go out and get our dinner. We haven't been out in ages anywhere as a family together. So we said we'd go out and we get our dinner. It was kind of a last minute decision. But unfortunately, Saturday night at about 10 o'clock, it started to rain. And between 10 o'clock on Saturday night, and 10 o'clock, 24 hours basically on the Sunday night, we had about 30 mil rain that fell. Constant heavy rain that never laid up. And unfortunately the paddock they were in was left like this. Now this is around the gap, but a lot of the paddock is well tore up. There's a little bit of the bottom and was holding off for the day after because growth is so slow, we're trying to hold the cows back. Because they're only still out in the daytime, remember? Um, this time last year we had them out at night. And most years we'd have them out at night, this time of year, but grass just wasn't growing, so we were keeping them in at night and trying to give the grass just a little bit of time to grow. So we came home yesterday, I knew there was going to be harm done to the paddock, because I could see the cows from the road on the way home. That's the first thing I looked at on the way home, I threw my eye over, I could see the farm from the opposite direction, and I could see the cows all standing up at the gate at three o'clock on the day, and that wasn't a nice sign, which was annoying, but it happens. So we're going to have to roll it first, get it all packed back down again, and then we can run the rake band over it and sow some seed on it. So a lot of you might remember um, in the last video, we had a heifer here that was due to calve. In fact, there she's there, 872. She calved on the 16th, on her due date. She calved about 11, half 11 that night. And she's very, very quiet, never makes a move. So that was great, because heifers can be some of them can be quite noisy, but we handle them as often as we can. I often say that in videos before. Sometimes then we get a chance, what we do is we put them into the yard a couple of days and let them just walk up through the parlor, pull a bit of mail down and just leave them. Let them walk across on their own, at their own ears, so they get used to it. And they know then that it's a safe place for them to go and they're not under any threat. And then when the time they come to camp, it just, it works wonders. They already know where they're going. They already know sort of the routine and they get used to the milking machine noise very, very quickly. It works really well for us. But these cows, now we have only a small number left to calve. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six left to calve. They don't need all this room. And these ones do, because there's more over here that haven't got enough cubicle space to lay down now that they're back in again. Um, so we need to move this gate um, up here to this section and allow an extra few cubicles for these cows to lay down a bit more room to move around. So that's what I'm going to do now. That done. I can put another couple of cows over here to make a wee bit more space and that will leave them all much happier. I'll put a block of silage in here now shortly. I have to put the cover back in the pit. All the winter jobs has to be done now today so it's going to leave me a lot busier. I'm going to do all that stuff now off camera and then we're going to get on to the next job. New day, new job. The job today as you can see behind is spraying. We are going to be spraying our silage ground because we have a lot of dockings. Any of you that watched the channel would have seen last year when it was mowing out our fields in our second and third cut that we had quite a few dockings and I said that time we'd have to address them. Uh, and this year, no different, they're back. You might wonder why I'm getting thrown around the place here when I'm talking to you. Well, that's our lovely roads that we travel. As you can see there, you really just have to crawl. They're in a hard mess, these roads. And it's the same the whole way along. Nothing you do about it. I heard a thing on the radio there, but a week ago they're talking about the amount of failed NCT vehicles this last while that's showing up. Um, they can't understand why there's so many. They obviously don't look at the roads. We're coming into a spot here that's about a foot deep. And yes, this is a public road. This goes straight through. And you can see, you just have to put up with it because it's never going to change. I don't think in my lifetime because this road hasn't seen tar in about 50 years. Now, as we're over here, and first of all, what a great day. A brilliant day. Not very warm, but nice and dry. and. Nice blue skies, you can't beat that. Now, we'll get over there later on and we'll have a look. The big hill, as we call it, is a lot worse than this one here. 
not going to spray the entire field. Um, I don't want to waste spray and I don't want to be spraying grass on areas that don't actually need it. So we're not going to be doing a huge amount of spray and we're just going to be going over areas that are really bad and really badly infected with Dawkins and we'll just cover those because I don't want to be driving through my silage field too much either if I can help it but it's time to get it done ideally would have liked to be able to put it on the 54 but the 54 is busy it's got the post driver on it and that means if I take the post driver off put on the sprayer I'll have to put the post driver back on later on this evening because we have post broke at home always the way we've post broke at home that we have to fix before we put cows into certain fields so it's handy I don't have to take it back off this tractor this evening I can leave it on for a little while but I better keep at it because I have a cow at home that's about to calve um, so time is of the essence, let's get at it. Now, before we add any chemical, I'm just going to actually run it because I haven't run it yet to test to see what it's like. It's just full of water at the minute. You all remember what happened last year. It was a pretty big mess. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we have no leaks. Yeah, we're good. So what I'm doing at the minute now is I have the sprayer um, in mixing mode, uh, the handle down, that's allows the sprayer to agitate the stuff inside and we've added the chemical now which is Dockstar Pro and then basically what I do is I put it on to spray close the whole cab down and away I go and if I'm ever getting out of the cab mask goes on because sprays are dangerous you don't have to be reading in books or doing courses to know that sprays are very dangerous for your health and um, so you should always wear a mask when you're getting out even if there's no drift or whatever You'll always smell it, and that is no good for you. So put on a mask anytime you get out. I'm in a nice sealed cab here now at the minute. Nothing ever gets in, but if I can smell anything, I throw a mask on me. So that's been mixing there now for a few minutes. It's plenty agitated. It's time to start spraying. here so I'm kind of picking out an area that I want to do so kind of drawing a circle I'm not just going along the hedges or any of that I'm kind of drawing a circle around the area that I want to do and then work on that whole area get that whole area done so that's what a little bit of concentration is because I'm not trying to waste any of this stuff I'm trying to make sure I'm getting it where I need it you can see there's plenty of dolphins there well there's a few and I want to aim for that other three now that's on the other side that's a straight line that I'm going to get and then I'm going to go back and forth across that and do that whole section and that section will be finished. That's by far the worst section. And then we go around and we just zigzag around and get the other areas. As you can see we have a good growth on our silage fields already. Grass in the last couple of days has really started to grow. We had really heavy rain there as I said on Easter Sunday. But now we've got a bit of heat and grass is really starting to grow. I'm definitely glad to see that. A lot of farmers have been glad to see that. It'd be lovely now to get our cows out at night. That's what I cannot wait for, get to get our cows out at night. Now I don't need to actually turn the sprayer on yet because there's not many dolphins here where I'm sitting. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye where we are. And now we'll just put it on there. It's just a matter of trial and error. We're not going to get them all, but we're going to get enough that's going to alleviate a lot of them coming into the silage pit. One thing about this cab, I have the air conditioning on at the minute because of a tornado on, you guys will not hear me. But when you close the windows, it is warm. It is very, very warm, very quickly. You're surrounded in so much glass that you can be actually half cooked in here. And it's not that warm outside, it's just when the sun is beaming down, it gets warm very fast.
right, so we're in the yard here now. We take it nice and easy, we don't want to disturb her. There's a pair of feet right there. And we see a nose and we see a tongue. I might just give her a little bit of a hand because the calf's not in the water bag and I've been watching her this past 30 minutes and the calf has been kind of in the same position the whole time. Right, I have left her for another 10, nearly 15 minutes and she's done nothing, walking around. And one thing I'm noticing is them feet and nose, they're not in a bag anymore. And it's time really she lay down and press that calf out, which she's hopefully gonna do now. Good girl. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put on a pair of ropes here and just pull myself, I don't need a jack. She'll push along with me and she's a big cow. She doesn't need the jack on her at all. It's weird this year, has been a very weird year. Now normally we wouldn't have Frisians in April at all. We wouldn't use probably Frisians from mid-April onwards because we don't really tend to want heifer calves after that age because it's late in the year and it kind of delays them the whole time. But by God, I'm glad I made the decision to put an extra few late ones just as a precaution because now we have enough heifers. We've one more cow that's done with Frisian as well and she'll be calving either tonight or tomorrow and that's it then. We have a few Belgian blues, but we're nearly finished calving at that stage. Just everything with it to be a little bit later. There's no problem with that. So I'll leave her be. I'll go down and get me lunch and I'll go off and finish my evening spraying. And that calf will get up, I'd say itself very shortly and be sucking probably before I come back. Come on a second. Now it's the day after that spraying was done and I wanted to take you back in because normally within 24 hours you'll start to see the docking starting to change their form, starting to lay a bit flat and fortunately I can tell you that's the case. The dockins are all starting to lay down, you can pick them out now in the fields very easy because they're turning over their leaf like this here and when they turn over the leaf like that there you can see them very very easily and you can see it through the field very easily so it looks like we got a nice kill and it was just the right time to do it i'll give you another update in a couple of weeks and let you see what they look like but they're laying fairly flat there now so it has hit every one of them and that should wipe them out a lot of people whether i'm slurrying or spraying or spreading fertilizer basically would tell me to look about getting gps for my tractor which i can understand perfectly the reasons why it has loads of benefits the only thing i will say about it is we were offered a gps system with auto steer on the whole bells and whistles to try out for a year and that was offered to us could have been even about a year ago now and we turned it down because it was a very expensive machine someone in my situation with a farm the size of ours isn't going to invest that type of money in a GPS system. I certainly wouldn't. Our biggest field here is about 15 acres and then we walk down from that. We have fields that are only two acres, fields three, four and so on. So an auto steer isn't really needed for us. Now yesterday I got offered another GPS system with auto steer again from a Swedish company. Um, I can't remember the name. I can't even pronounce the name of it when I seen it. I, not for life of me could any of us pronounce it. But I looked them up and it was basically the same thing again um, which was offered to us. So, and I will be honest about this for next to nothing and it'd be a machine that'd be really expensive really expensive for you guys to go out and buy and part of that parcel would be i'd be showing you guys it working and telling you how good it is and so and so on i don't want to do that because if i came in with an auto steer in a field that's maybe nine ten acres i don't think it'd look normal i don't think it'd suit our farm whatsoever and it'd look out of place. So I hope you kind of get what I mean. We get offered a ball of stuff, everything from razor blades to makeup. I was insulted by that one. Um, but work clothes and tools and you name it, we get offered it. And to be honest with you, I torn 99% of it away now. People might say, why would you do that? Well, look, they're all great products. But if I have one of them already, I don't need a second one. 
or if I couldn't see myself using it on the farm or making use of it properly on the farm, there's no point in me taking it. I'm not just gonna take something to show you guys what it does and how good it is and all that kind of crack. I probably will look for a GPS unit to buy myself. Something very small without auto steer or any of those things. Just something that could show me lines of where I'm going and be as basic as basic can be without it spinning the earth on it. I could use it for spraying. I seen that yesterday. I could use it for fertilizer. I could use it for slurrying now that I have the dribble bar. And sometimes the lines are a little bit hard to see, but I can get by without one. If I seen one secondhand or if I seen one that was in reasonable money, I might buy one in the future. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. I did price a few online and I scratched my head and said, no way. It's not something I would be rushing out and buying. No, but it's something I would rather buy myself at the same time. So that's it, I'm gonna leave it there for the day. Thanks very much for watching our videos as always. If you haven't, hit that sub button, give us a like if you enjoy our content. Until the next one, we'll talk to you again.